If you have tried the new C-Star Equatorial Mode, or if you've seen my last video on Equatorial Mode with the C-Stars, then you might be familiar with some of this color blotching in the background of your images in Equatorial Mode. And this is better visible if I do an ultra stretch. So you can see in the background, there's all of this uh, red and green color blotching. Um, now it's not very visible once the images are processed. For example, this was a processed image of Messier 106 and it's not very visible, but if I do stretch the image, you can see that that color blotching is still there. So I was trying to find a way to completely get rid of it. Um, so I got some data and then I spent a lot of time uh, just processing through all of that trying to find the best way to get rid of this issue. Since this blotching is caused by a lack of sufficient dithering in equatorial mode, I decided to try mosaic mode in the C-Star in equatorial mode to see if I could uh, get rid of this issue by using the extra dithering that would be offered by using mosaic mode. To do that in the C-Star app, I go to the Atlas as usual and I look up M106. And then on this screen, I will click on the framing button uh, on the right side of the screen. And instead of 1x magnification, I will set that to 1.1x magnification. So that'll only slightly increase uh, the field of view. However, that should force the C-Star to dither the image more aggressively and that should allow us to get rid of that color blotching in the background. And once I've set that to 1.1x, I'll hit go to at the bottom and go to that galaxy again. Okay, so the C-Star has been imaging this object for a couple of hours now. That's about five hours. Uh, using the mosaic function. So let's take a look. Yeah, I don't see any blotching here in the background now, even in equatorial mode. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Uh, let's try the AI denoise feature now to see how it does. Okay, yep. With the AI denoise, the background still looks very, very clean. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, I've darkened the background a little bit and uh, yeah, that's pretty good for in-app processing. Now let's take it over to the computer and see how things are looking there. So I've loaded up all of the individual sub-exposures from the C-Star uh, when I was using mosaic mode at 1.1x setting. And let's quickly go through all of these exposures very, very quickly. Maybe that's a little bit too fast. Let's do this. So as you can see, this is the Galaxy Messier 106 and it's moving between each of the frames. Uh, the Galaxy is still there in, in almost every single frame, so we're not losing any signal to noise ratio. However, the Galaxy is being moved around quite aggressively, so that should even out the noise very, very well. So let's close this out and open up the stacked images. Now, I spent a lot of time trying to work out the best way to stack these mosaic images in PixInsight. Um, and this is the best I was able to get after all of my testing. And it looks pretty good. However, I do still notice some very, very faint uh, lines in the background uh, that are because of uh, improper normalization. Basically, it's, it's hard to get proper normalization when you're using uh, mosaic mode. So that was not perfect. However, I opened up the image uh, that the C star itself had stacked. That was this one over here. And I compared it to the result that I got by manually stacking everything in PixInsight. And uh, as you can see, the C-Star actually did a very good job of stacking it. And in the C-Star uh, stack, I don't see any of those faint artifacts that I do here uh, in my image. So uh, what, what we're gonna do is just use the C-Star um, stacked image instead. Now, even doing an auto stretch, the background looks very, very clean. I don't notice uh, any of that color blotching that we were seeing previously. Um, so I ended up uh, processing this image in PixInsight to see how it compares um, to our previous image. So on the left is the previous image in equatorial mode without the mosaic mode. And this was a total of five hours and 30 minutes of data. Whereas on the right is the new stack, uh, which is using uh, equatorial mode, however, with mosaic mode in 1.1x magnification. And this is only three hours and 15 minutes of data because that's all I could get before the clouds moved in. 
uh, but it should still give us an idea of what is possible when using mosaic mode. Now if I auto stretch the result on the left which was without mosaic mode you can see all of that that green in the background on the right uh, with the 1.1x mosaic mode that color blotching is completely gone so that is very very promising to see and I can undo that auto stretch again. Um, so as you can see over here, uh, there is a bit more detail in the previous image, but that's because there's almost twice as much data in that image as there is in the image in which I used mosaic mode. However, uh, since mosaic mode was able to solve our issue, I will continue to use mosaic mode at 1.1x setting in equatorial mode, uh, and I should be able to get some very very nice results and as you can see the rest of the image looks very good as well and I do hope to get a couple more nights of data on Messier 106 just to see what I can do in equatorial mode then. And now you might be wondering if there are any real downsides to using mosaic mode in this way to get rid of the color blotching uh, on C-star images. I don't think so because the galaxy is present in every single image uh, so on a smaller target like this uh, you know it's not like you're losing any real signal to noise ratio and vignetting is not really an issue in C-star images either because of the really small sensor so we're not really losing any signal to noise ratio because of that so I don't see any downsides to using mosaic mode in this way if you do uh, let me know in the comment section of this video below thanks again for watching and clear skies